So we meet again, Mr. Powers. What the hell was that? <sighs> I'm way too tired for it to be this early in the night. What is going on, everybody? Mars way up there in the sky right now. I did a few videos back, uh, a Mars animation time-lapse with the C8 back when I had it. Now, I'm gonna try it with the C11. Some kind of bug on there. Let's just see how it turns out. With so many different camera options on the market, you know, mono and color, and if you get mono, which one and which filters and all that crap. I mean, in theory, a mono camera should be the color camera every time. The problem with the mono camera is, is having to do the filters so when you do an animation you know so mars rising over there to mars getting over there is going to take you know six seven hours so doing animation with a mono camera takes three times as much storage capacity because you have to do three times the amount of video but i read an article the other day by the london astronomer about using when jupos to derotate every two videos to get a mid frame. So say for instance, tonight we're doing an interval of 15 minutes. So I'll take a sequence, wait 15 minutes, take another sequence. In the first video, I did a five minute interval and that took up so much disk space. But in theory, by doing a sequence every 15 minutes and then taking two sequences back to back and derotating them to make another image, then in theory, I'll have a sequence every seven and a half minutes, which will give me twice as many frames and a whole and save a whole lot of disk space. I've been having a few problems with WinJupos though, as far as Mars goes. I don't know, I don't think I have the settings quite dialed in right, but if it will help me save a bunch of space, it's definitely worth a shot. But man, am I tired. But yeah, no, so we got the we got the C11, still got the two times power mate, the filter wheel, the RGB filters, and the ASI 290mm rocking and rolling. Got about another four minutes before I gotta start the next sequence, so we'll just go from there. I'm so tired. I was running and gunning last night, uh, and then about 2.45-ish, there was a real thin layer of clouds that rolled in, and I was supposed to be in for an hour, and that kind of ruins an animation, so I went ahead and called it a night. I got to sleep a little after three, and then woke up a little after six to get the kids ready to go to school, so those three big old cups of coffee I had are wearing off. So if I slur my words a little more than usual, you know why. We managed to get 16 recordings last night, most of which were scattered 15 minutes apart. There was a few bumps in there. Had some issues to deal with, but that doesn't matter. Our goal with this is to take those 16 recordings and make additional frames because a 15 minute interval of Mars, even though it rotates every 24 hours, will still be choppy. So if we fill in those gaps, we get a whole lot more smoother animation. Again, credit to the London astronomer. Uh, I'll tag him with a link to that tutorial in the description below. So you can see we have all of our RGB sequences from last night. These have already been stacked and combined. And then 
there were some issues toward the end. I don't know if it's because of the haze or whatever. So the planet kind of decentered itself towards the end. So then those color images were ran through PIP and recentered. And then now I've already gone through some of them and when Jupos just to make sure it worked before I made this tutorial because there wouldn't be no good to do a tutorial if it didn't work. Here's what we got right now. So we got when Jupos open. So you can see we have Mars opened up here in when Jupos. We'll open up the next one in the sequence. So this is 345.8. So we'll open up 405.9. So now you'll see here we started out at 208 and 231 and then it spit out a middle one for 219 and then so on and so forth. So 31 and 53 became 42, 53 and 25 became 309, so on and so forth. So now we're going from 345-8 to 405.9. Mars seemed to center itself pretty well. So we'll save, save. So now when I open up those two, we'll go derotation of images. So I'll take 345.8 and 405.9, open those up. And I want to change the image size to 552 because that's the long side of the existing file. So it'll make it easier to center later. And north to top, blah, blah, blah. Compile. And there we go. And you won't be able to tell because it's really, really, really small. So if we make it really, really big, you still really won't be able to tell. But this image splits the difference of the other two. And that's all we're doing. But if you do that, 16 times you've essentially almost you know doubled your frames or something like that i'm really tired just give me a little credit here And now you can see we went from 16 RGB images to 31. So that's going to make this animation a whole lot smoother. So now the problem is when Jupos only orientates either South Pole on bottom or South Pole on top, up straight up and down. All of our other images is cocked off to the side, pointing towards like the five o'clock position. So now we need to orientate all the poles the same way. So that should be super fun. So we will have to load all of these into Photoshop and orientate them the right way, re-export them again, so on and so forth. So just stick around, I guess enjoy the ride, I guess. try to put them in Photoshop but the I couldn't get the poles and the planet to line up without it being mismatched so what I ended up doing was opening the single files back in WinJupos and only derotating the single file and so now you can see all of the poles are on the south and all of the Boxes are all the same size, so all the plans are lined up. So now you can pretty much make your animation in PIP. So we'll go ahead and go through that now. So you have all your source files, and you want to go ahead and do planetary animation. And we'll check our inputs. Nothing should change. Okay, do not stretch the histogram. Center object. Take. Okay, so the planet selected. We can crop down because our boxes are 552, but you know. 
they're all kind of tilted a little bit so we'll go ahead and crop it down to 500 test okay quality don't worry about animation if you skip animation and go to output you can change your frame rate so we have 31 frames if we play it at 30 frames a second it's only gonna last one second we don't want to do that so we'll slow it down a little bit maybe do half that so we'll do 15. So it'll go through the entire anime, the entire sequence in two seconds. So we can go ahead and play them forward, play them reverse, and we can pause at the end of each of those. So it'll run through it, pause, run reverse, pause, and you can dictate how many times you want it to run. So we'll only pause for five frames there and back. And I don't know, we'll repeat it three times. ABI format, quality 10, 15, frames a second, do processing, and let's see what happens. And that's how you make an animation. It can be done. I really need a nap. I'm so tired. Yeah. Anyway, and instead of running it through PIP, you can load the files. Like I said, you can load the files into Photoshop, put your finishing touches on it if you want to. And then from there, you can go to Premiere Pro and have even more control over the final output add music, zoom in and out. That's almost six hours of rotation. So that's pretty sweet. I know, you could tell it in my face. God, Mars Opposition 2020 is tonight, uh, but that does not mean that it's the last possible time to do an animation or anything. I mean, Mars will still be plenty available to do an animation for at least the next eight months. Albeit it'll be smaller with less detail, but you'll still be able to clearly see the rotation. Jupiter is a great one to do because it rotates so fast and it's still fairly bright in the sky. Same principles behind it. But I do highly recommend this method if you have a mono camera because even though I ended up shooting 220 gigabytes, in theory I would have shot almost half a terabyte if I wouldn't have done the Winjupos sequencing method. So again, shout out to the London Astronomer. Thank you so much for that article. I guess I'm going to load all these files into Photoshop and maybe go take me a quick nap before I fall asleep sitting here. But until next time, I'll see y'all later.